So some of you may have noticed that uh, I put up my previous video called Demystifying Imaginary Numbers, and then I took it down again, and then I put it back up. And the reason I did that was because I made a statement in, in the video that one of my viewers claimed was incorrect, and, um, and I thought maybe there was a bug in my program, and so I took the video down, cut out that section, and then put it back up again. So what I claimed was the following. Okay, so uh, normally when I write uh, complex numbers, and actually I'm, uh, I call now I call them simplex numbers because they are so simple that uh, they're not complicated. They're actually very simple when you write um, these numbers in uh, two by two matrix format. So I am going to call uh, them simplex numbers uh, just for fun. Okay, so the convention I use for simplex numbers is I put the um, the real component on the forward diagonal and they have the same sense. And I put the imaginary component on the backward diagonal and they have opposite sense. So what I said uh, in the previous video that I, um, that I took out was that um, this is just a convention that I could just as easily put the imaginary component on the forward diagonal and it would have the opposite sense and I could put the real component on the backward diagonal and it would have the same sense. So what I claimed in the video is the following. So the convention that I use is I put the real component on the forward diagonal and the values have the same sense and I put the imaginary component on the backward diagonal and uh, each component has uh, a different sense. And so what I claimed was that this is just a convention and uh, I could just as easily have put the imaginary component with the opposite sense on the forward diagonal and the real component where there, each component has the same sense on the backward diagonal. And so this convention um, corresponds to this algebraic formula, A plus BI, and this convention corresponds to the formula AI plus B. So it turns out the viewer was right in that this is not, um, this is not correct, that this is not, um, this is not I in the conventional sense, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the logic that I went through to figure this out. So here is the code I use for setting up a two by two matrix, uh, uh, simplex matrix. And so uh, the convention I use is I put the uh, real component on the forward diagonal and the back, um, the imaginary component on the backward diagonal. So to test this convention, what I did was I took two points, which I previously defined, and I put them both into a two by two matrix. So I put them into, I called my setup uh, simplex uh, function, and I set them up into a matrix, and I called them point matrix one and point matrix two. And so point matrix one is a two by two matrix, and point matrix two is a two by two matrix. So then what I do is I set up my rotation matrix. And so the rotation matrix in this convention will have the cosine on the forward diagonal and they will have the same sense and it will have the sign on the backward diagonal and they will have opposite sense. And so I'm going to put the cos and the sine of this angle into a rotation matrix and call the same function the setup simplex which uh, will put the cosine of the rotation uh, angle on the forward diagonal and the sine of the rotation angle on the backward diagonal. And um, of course I need to convert to radians to do this, so I'm going to rotate my point by 10 degrees or whatever that happens to be in radians. Next, what I do is I multiply the 
rotation matrix by the point matrix. I multiply these two matrices together and get the results in. So I'm going to rotate point one, which is in a two by two matrix with the rotation matrix, which is also a two by two matrix. And I'm gonna get the result out, which is also a two by two matrix. So I'm gonna do this for point one and point two. Finally, I take the result uh, from those two rotations, result one and result two, and I extract the new point. Now, I am using row convention. I think uh, a lot of people actually use column convention when they do their matrix multiplication, but I am using row convention. And so I pull out the top row of the two by two matrix, and then I plot the points uh, into my user interface. Now we're going to run the program and see the results of this, um, this approach. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna add two points. Here are the two points that I added in my code. I had predefined two points and, they, and here they are right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, run the code that I just showed you. And here you can see that the points are rotating um, approximately 10 degrees. I told them to rotate 10 degrees and they are rotating 10 degrees and the rotation is counterclockwise from our point of view. Okay, so um, this is working as a uh, rotation. The simplex numbers in the convention that I am using create a counterclockwise rotation when um, when Z is point, when positive Z is pointing towards, uh, towards me. And so I have uh, the standard convention, which is positive Y is up, positive X is to the right, and positive Z is towards me. And when I do that and I run my code, I get a counterclockwise rotation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the opposite convention. So I'm going to do, uh, put the imaginary component which has opposite sense on the forward diagonal and I'm going to put the real component which has the same sense on the um, backward diagonal. To accomplish that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the uh, forward diagonal have opposite sense and I'm going to make the backward diagonal have the same sense. So this is now the AI plus B convention rather than the A plus BI convention. Okay, so I'm not gonna change anything else. That is the only change I'm going to make. And now I'm going to run um, the program. So here are the two points, the same two points. And now I'm going to run the same function, but with the um, real on the backward diagonal and the imaginary on the forward diagonal. And here you can see that I am the rotations and now I've got 10 degree rotations, but they are now going clockwise. Okay, so the convention that I'm using um, is opposite to, um, to the uh, different convention. Uh, one spins clockwise, so that I didn't change the coordinate system at all. And so um, positive X uh, is still to the right, positive Y is still up, and positive Z is still um, out of the page pointing towards me. Uh, and so now you can see that we're getting clockwise rotations. And so I suppose if you want um, clockwise rotations to be your convention, then you would use uh, this matrix here. And if you want counterclockwise to be your convention, then you would use this matrix here. So now I wanna to get to the point that the viewer was trying to make, and they, were, they did make a valid point. Okay, so all I was able to do was verify that, um, that this matrix uh, creates rotations and this matrix also can create rotations. But it turns out that the rules for I on the backward diagonal are different than the rules for I on the forward diagonal. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use um, an online matrix multiplication 
um, app that I found that will make it easy to show you uh, what is going on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up um, the matrices. I'm going to multiply i by itself on the backward diagonal. So um, in my convention, um, i is 1 and minus 1 on the backward diagonal, and so I'm going to multiply 1 and minus 1 by 1 and minus 1, and we're going to get the results. And so what you see here are, um, is that i squared is equal to minus 1. Okay, so this is with the standard convention, with the convention that I'm using, where real is on the forward diagonal and imaginary is on the backward diagonal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to write I in uh, this matrix, and I'm going to write the uh, complex conjugate in this uh, matrix here. And so the complex conjugate, to do the complex conjugate, what you do is you uh, take the reverse. So if this is positive and this is negative, uh, this is negative and this is positive. And when you multiply these two matrices together, what you get is ones on the forward diagonal. And so this is what you get with the um, with the uh, convention that I'm using, where you have real on the forward diagonal and you have imaginary on the backward diagonal. A complex um, the complex conjugate when you multiply i by its complex conjugate, you get ones on the forward diagonal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use the opposite convention where the, uh, where the opposite signs are on the forward diagonal. So I'm going to do 1 and minus 1 times 1 and minus 1. And when you do that, you actually get 1 on the forward diagonal. Okay, so technically the, when you put i on the forward diagonal, it's not really i. It is, uh, is actually... Uh, whatever that is squared, I'm going to call it um, p. Okay, p squared is equal to 1. So it is not an imaginary number in the traditional sense of uh, the imaginary number where i squared is equal to minus 1. In this case, uh, p squared is equal to 1, produces 1s on the forward diagonal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, multiply um, this value 1 and minus 1 uh, with minus 1 and 1 on the forward diagonal. So this is sort of analogous to the complex conjugate. conjugate. It's not really the complex conjugate because this is on the forward diagonal. But when you multiply 1 uh, and minus 1 by minus 1 and 1, then what happens is you get minus 1s on the forward diagonal. So basically what I'm trying to say is that this i here does not behave like this i here because uh, this i here, when you square it, you get uh, ones on the forward diagonal, and this i here, when you multiply by the inverse of it, then you get minus ones on the forward diagonal. So this is not a complex number uh, by definition of complex numbers uh, in terms of i squared equals minus one. Okay, in this case, the uh, inverse of i, I if you put uh, 1 here and minus 1 here and, and multiply it by minus 1 here and 1 here, you get minus 1. So it's got the opposite rules. The rules of this, this is like inverse world or bizarro world. Okay, so if you use this, you would have to change all your rules. And that is the point um, that uh, the viewer wanted to make. And so it took me a while to figure this out because, you know, because I'm not that smart. But um, I did eventually work through this. Uh, at first, I thought because because this created rotations, it must be a complex number, and it is a complex number, but not in the standard definition of complex numbers. Okay, so I just wanted to to make that point. It's it's very interesting. You could still use this matrix to do rotations if you want clockwise rotations to be um, to be your your default standard, but um, if you want to actually use the rules of complex numbers as they are historically defined, then you have to use this matrix here.
And of course, the main reason I became interested in complex numbers, simplex numbers, is because of the beautiful Mandelbrot set. Yes, there are other uh, two by two matrices that um, maybe don't have uh, this form. You can have um, maybe plus plus here and minus minus here. You can have other two by two matrices, but unless they generate a Mandelbrot set, I'm not really that interested. And so that is uh, another point I want to make because, um, you know, because I believe uh, complex numbers, simplex numbers are special, that this formalism is special, and it is because of the Mandelbrot set. And so that's all I'm going to say for now, and I hope you all are having a great day, and um, I will be back.